Hi there, I'm Josh Finn from J&H Aerospace, and today we are talking about flight trimming the Stinger. Now, as you can see, I'm outside, so this video is going to be a little bit interesting in that regard, but we're going to try to cover some of the common problems that are encountered with this model airplane. So, to start off, before we proceed further, you need to make sure you have a suitable flight box, because for Science Olympiad rules, you must have one box per airplane. When you are outside, the airplane should be in the box. These airplanes are not to be flown outdoors, however, on calm evenings, we can pull the airplane out and fly it. You need to have a suitable winding station of some sort for the airplane. So this is a J&H Aerospace torque meter right here. However, there are a variety of other options. You could go so far as, I don't have one handy, but clip a, a paper clip to something hard on a table and wind on that. We have detailed a lot of that information in the Senior Flyer video, and I recommend that before watching this that you go into that information because you need to have a uh, proper winding station, you need to have the rubber lubricant, all, the, all of the relevant items. We have a freshly lubricated rubber motor that we're going to be using for the testing in this video, and that'll get us through. So next, we're going to talk about the airplane. This video assumes that if you are flying an IFAS propeller, that you have already reinforced that propeller with the carbon rods. So we are assuming that that has already occurred. We are not assuming that the rest of the airplane is built correctly, so we're going to talk about that now. Also notice I am storing this airplane in a model stand so that it is safely stowed during operation, can't be easily stepped on, and so on. Now I am loading my rubber motor onto the torque meter the way we showed in the senior flyer video. So again, it's very important that you watch that video. We are going to start by winding in 400 turns. The airplane will not be able to produce a climb with that. However, this airplane is also wildly out of trim, so it's not going to do so anyway. So we load again from the front of the airplane, we load onto the prop shaft. The uh, knot for the rubber motor is towards the back so that it can't tangle things up. And now we can slide onto the rear hook just like that. So we're going to launch the airplane. So we let go of the propeller and let go of the plane. And we notice, first of all, that the tail, you can see that tail is twisting. We're going to go over why it's twisting. So what we can see, if we notice, this tail is moving around this way. This is a very common problem. This is a very common problem with this airplane is students fail to notice that this glue joint may have popped loose here or here. So we need to ensure that this is correctly fastened. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue, apply glue. And it's best if you do this on a table because you want to make sure that this leading edge is parallel to the trailing edge, just like that. Now my wing is behaving nicely, yours may not. We can now see that the tail is no longer moving around. The wing is moving around a little bit. That's because those rubber bands are old. You should replace them if they start getting floppy like that. But the tail is secure. So now we've wound in 400 turns again. We're going to go again. And we notice the airplane is rolling off to the left as it dives into the ground. So the reason the airplane is diving in is that we don't have enough angular difference between the tail and the wing. And the way that we're going to solve that is we're going to put a shim in place to, to restore the angle between the tail and the wing. Let's break off a piece of balsa. This is some thin wood from uh, that we made the um, wing tips from. So we've got a little piece right here. It's just a small piece of wood. I don't know that looks big on the screen, but remember it looks big because my fingers also look big. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to lift up the tail right here so we see we're lifting it up and we slide this into the end. We don't slide it all the way in, just a little bit. Like that. Now what I have done is I have raised the back, this area relative to the forward part. And remember you do have to have two rubber bands on here to make sure this is secure. So let's see what that does for us. All right, so it didn't dive in as fast, but we need more shim. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually pull the tail off of the airplane. I'm going to take the shim that I had before, and I'm going to glue it in place, because I do not want that shim to become lost, so I need to make sure that it stays put. Now, it's very important when you're doing this that you avoid the possibility of gluing the tail itself in. Because we want it to be continue to be remo removable so that we can make these adjustments. Now I'm going to glue another shim on top of the existing one. So you can see now I have two shims in the end here. So now I can slide my tail boom back into its slot. Just like that. And you can see now we have more angle between the boom and the fuselage. Alright, so the airplane is no longer diving. So that looks good. Okay, we have now wound in 700 turns so the motor's wound more tightly. And... The airplane is really struggling to climb. It's getting that nose down again towards the end here. It's just not happy. Toward the end of that flight, we noticed the airplane was starting to get its nose down some more and it was turning in more to the left. That is because if you look, this wing is twisted in this direction. Now, in my case, I screwed up intentionally the way a lot of y'all did, and I did not have this attached properly, so this wing can swing around a little bit. So what I'm going to do is on the front of this wing, right here, I'm going to crack it loose a little bit, just like that. Now, if there's any resistance, if this is wiggling around too much as far as your wing mount, you're going to need to get tighter rubber bands. You may even need to use masking tape to secure them. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue this, this little diagonal on so that I can get my wing to lay flat like that. And I'm also going to put some glue here at the center section where I cracked it because I want that to stay secure. We want this wing, we actually want a teeny tiny bit of opposite twist, just like that. This term, so there's a term called wash-in, and you need to become familiar with it. Wash-in is when the, oh, I did this wrong. Now we're going to get it corrected slightly differently. Wash-in is when the leading edge is higher than the trailing edge out of the tip as compared to the center. Now, if you notice very closely, I don't have any, so I have to put glue back on here and fix it correctly. So I want this glued so that on my left wing, that leading edge is higher than the trailing edge. Not quite there. Come on. Just like that. So what this does is it keeps the plane from getting into too tight of a turn in there to the left. Okay, so we have our wing twist corrected. So again, let's see. A po very slight positive twist out there. Let the plane go. 
and it looks a lot happier it's got a little bit of a turn kind of wandering <laughs> plane hit us again turns a little inconsistent it's also flying a little fast not getting much altitude to correct for the plane not getting not getting keeping its nose up we're going to slide the wing forward a little bit just like that so now watch what happens the airplane actually had a little bit of a stall there now remember we didn't wind this up again so all i did is take it out here but you notice it's keeping its nose up real nice now i don't feel that the turn is tight enough it's a little uh inconsistent so what we're gonna do is we're going to take one of these fins right here and we're going to crack it and glue it so it's bent like that just like so and so what that's going to do is it's going to push the tail to the right which will cause the nose to go to the left and that'll give us a little more consistent of a turn Okay, 800 turns again, about uh, 0.4 inch ounces of torque. We'll let the plane go. It's stalling a little bit. May have to slide the wing back a little. May even be able to take out a little bit of the shim. Plane's not climbing very much though. But it is turning very nice, very nice and consistently. Yeah, we're actually going to take a little bit of the shim out because it's flying a little too nose high. We're also going to wind it up more. One very important thing to point out is make sure that your propeller shaft is straight. So from here back along there, that should be straight. It should not be bent at all. If it is, it will rob power, and that will explain why you've gotten to this stage and the plane still isn't climbing at all. Now we're at uh, 0.65 inch ounces, and so let's see what this does. So we get a very nice climb, no stalling. So remember we took a little bit of that shim out because it was stalling somewhat. And we've got a very, very nice climb going now. When your plane is flying, look to see if anything is flexing. You can see a little bit of vibration, which means the prop pitch is not quite uh, equal between the two blades. But my blades are tracking in the same uh, plane I see a lot of planes flying around where that's not the case, and it causes a lot of damage to the performance of those airplanes. But the thing I want to point out is we've gone from flying around at head height to now this airplane's 25 feet up. So very, very minor changes make a big difference in the behavior of these aircraft. Now I want to point out it's about uh, 45 degrees out here right now, maybe slightly less. Um, temperature's falling rapidly, and that means that this rubber motor is not performing up to spec. So the flight time on this airplane is not what it normally would be. Normally this airplane would still be in cruise right now. Because this is a very efficient, uh, carefully built, minimum weight airplane. and bonk this is with a different propeller this is a liam prop we're gonna make a few of these available a few kits have included them they are much better we are up at 1300 turns and 0.85 inch ounces as you can see the airplane gets away very strongly on this setup this is a much more efficient propeller Now our goal is to not land in the top of that tree, but I'm not so sure that's going to work out. Just missed it. Now the airplane's a little bit nose heavy, 
I don't know how well that shows up. It is flying a little bit flat. Um, that's because the Liam propellers are heavier. They're actually, Papatong is the company that he represents. Um, and so you have to slide the wing further forward. We're going to land on my house. I think we're going to land up on my house. Yep. Look at that. And pulls out and continues on. Hard to complain about that. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed the process of seeing this airplane trimmed out. Uh, a couple things I do want to point out that are very important on these airplanes. Make sure that in addition to everything else that you have clearly marked somewhere on the airplane, uh, usually on the fuselage is where people like to do it, um, identification of whose airplane it is as far as uh, the school and team. Not, not so much your name as, you know, put clearly visible, so like on this wing mount, um, you know, where it won't be covered up. The other thing is make sure you have your panel covered in. You're giving up 10% right there. Uh, another thing is, is to ensure that all of your logs are complete. Read what information is required. Make sure that your boxes are compliant. Make sure that the airplanes are minimum weight. Make sure you have your full tally of rubber motors. You need enough rubber motors to show up so that you can check in six at competition time. That means you should show up with 15. If you're not breaking rubber motors, you're doing it wrong. Lubricate with a silicon-based oil. We sell silicon oil. You can also get Molly Coat 33. Armor all works in a pinch. And make sure that you have your cover sheet, your dimension, your drawing of the airplane, showing all parts and components of the airplane, all of those things so that you don't get tiered for some silly thing. So again, make sure you have all of that information taken care of. Um, we go into greater detail in this in the uh, Senior Flyer videos, so you can check that out. If you have further questions or comments, post them in the comments section below. Contact us through the website, etc. If your plane still isn't flying, send us a video. Um, that's the best thing to do. Send a few photos, details of the plane. Make sure your building is light as you can. Make sure the covering is nice and smooth on your planes and not too tight. And we'll see you at the contests. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.